Welcome, darlings. This is Rujam. In today's podcast, I'm going to cover Matthew 8 of the Gospels. Before I begin, I want you all to remember that everyone is welcome here. I do not care who you are, nor do I care what your background is. If you decide to stay, yet you get offended. I still do not care. Let us continue from where we left off. Matthew 8 begins with, When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed on the selfsame hour. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and a fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, and so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him, and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? And when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Gergesons, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fear, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Or thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them, and heard of so many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city, and told everything, and it was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of the coast.
In Matthew 8, 1 to 4, Jesus instantly heals a man suffering from leprosy. Matthew 8, 5 to 13 continues where Jesus encounters another man whose faith is so strong that instead of asking Jesus to come to his home and heal his servant, he tells him that just by him speaking the word only, his servant shall be healed. This man's faith even amazes Jesus to the point where he tells him that he hasn't found so great a faith in Israel. We can learn a lesson from this man. Our faith must be as strong as his, if not stronger, in order to be a part of the kingdom of heaven and not be like the disobedient children of darkness who will be cast out. Matthew eight fourteen to 17 Jesus heals others that were sick as well as casting out demons and unclean spirits. He also fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah 53-4 in the Old Testament, which says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Matthew 8, 18-22 One of Jesus' disciples asks him to go and bury his dad. Jesus answers with a peculiar statement. He says, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. If you've read or even heard of this verse before, I'm sure that many of you were confused and probably even interpreted this verse to come off as mean, probably thinking what kind of a son or daughter would abandon the corpse of their dead parent. In this context, Jesus is not referring to the actual deceased parent. He is more so speaking of the temporary living dead, the spiritually dead. Those who are currently alive, yet they deny God, they deny Jesus with every fiber of their being. Those who have condemned themselves to eternal damnation. Those who continue to do evil and refuse to repent. Obviously, God knows who is joining him in his kingdom and who is being cast to the eternal darkness in the second death. The living must focus on life who is God himself. Whereas the dead can keep to the dead because that's where they're headed to anyway. A second death, a place devoid of God, devoid of life. That is why Jesus said, follow me. Because God is life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Matthew eight twenty three to 27 Jesus and his disciples are on a ship and there is a sudden storm. His disciples are panicking, thinking they're going to die because the ship is starting to get covered with waves. As all this is happening, Jesus is sleeping. He is unbothered and sleeping as his disciples awake him, telling him to save them because they think they are dying. He tells them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? This is funny to me because in a way it refers to all of our lives and the ways we as humans choose to deal with hardships and unforeseen chaos, including tribulations. If you think about it, this world is one big ship in a storm. There's going to be chaos, there's going to be tribulation, there's going to be hardships. It is unavoidable in this world because this world is temporary. This world isn't God's eternal kingdom, devoid of sin, devoid of evil. This is something that everyone, myself included, need to keep in mind at all times. There is no need to panic and worry when things get hard. Always trust God and have faith that it is all under his control. After all, he is our savior. All you need is faith. That is it. Even when things seem to head south, rather than panicking, just stop and picture yourself on a ship in a storm. But you are not alone because God is always with you. Jesus is with you. Do not be like the disciples on that ship. Do not freak out and do not be overly dramatic for no good comes of it. Be unbothered and chill like Jesus Christ. Remember that the more you panic, the more you drown. Like when Peter went to walk on water towards Jesus, and once the doubting set in his mind, so did the panicking and the drowning. That is why we must be armed with the armor of God at all times, because our faith in God is also our shield. Matthew eight twenty eight to 34 Jesus encounters two that were possessed with devils. These spiritual parasite freaks that are tormenting the poor hosts are lurking in tombs. They are described as exceeding fear so that no man might pass by that way. This is so interesting because once again you pick up that pattern of the dead being attracted to the dead. This is exactly why Jesus said that the dead bury the dead. In a way this applies to this as well under different circumstances of course. These spiritual prayers or abominations are drawn to tombs and graveyards. Why, you might ask? Because they are essentially the dead existing in a temporary, alive world. They are the spiritual walking dead. They are drawn to tombs for a reason. 
It is the spiritually dead, devoid of God, drawn to dead flesh, to earthly corpses. This is so symbolic, it is insanely sin, because God is a master of symbolism, especially when it comes to the Bible. Those who live for this earthly world, those who feed their flesh rather than the spirit, will end up consumed by the second death in the lake of fire. These freaks are lurking where they are most comfortable because all flesh will die in the end. It is only a matter of one choosing to feed their flesh or their soul, their spirit for God while they are alive in this wicked world. Even these freaks are terrified of Jesus. They know where they are headed because they cry out to him, asking him if he has come to torment these abominations before their time, which is clearly judgment day. The possessed are also described as exceeding fears, which is not unusual with possessed individuals. If you've read the Bible before, then you've probably picked up on their supernatural strength and viciousness. You can also notice this with certain people locked up in insane asylums. This may sound cruel, but I assure you there is a difference between cruel and stating factual statements whether you like to hear it or not. Mental illness is not a joke, it is very real. For example, depression is not always because of demonic activity. Most times, it is because the individual is actually mentally sick. Think of it as a different type of glue before the brain. Of course, God can cure it or in some cases help you endure it if it is a different form of depression because depression is not always the same. Some experience it because of loss or grief and throughout time they get better. However, there are others who have depression due to knowledge they have acquired throughout time. This is why Ecclesiastes 1.17 says, For much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. We live in a wicked, disgusting world, corrupted by evil and sin. Some things we find out can mentally break you, and because it is knowledge and wisdom that you have gained, it cannot be undone. But God isn't going to condemn you for it. He will be there to hold the pieces. Better to learn a bitter truth than live in a false reality. However, there is a different kind of sickness when it comes to mental health, or at least it is being masqueraded as mental sickness by this demonic health industry that wants you to pop pills and turn into vegetable zombies. As I mentioned before in my previous podcasts, Some so-called sicknesses are actually individuals being tormented by demons without the humans even knowing of their existence. Some individuals locked in insane asylums are an example of this. They hear voices, see and hear things that others do not. They have supernatural strength and viciousness and need to be restrained and drugged by doctors or nurses because they are harm to themselves or to others. Make no mistake. These are not mental illnesses. This is a different form of illness. These are spiritual parasitic freaks that possess and torment these poor people. Most are schizophrenic and whatever else. And only God, only Jesus, will be able to save you from this so-called illness. Only through the power of Jesus Christ, through the name of Jesus Christ, will they be torn and perish like the leeches they are. Back to Matthew 8, 30-34. The garbage devils have the audacity to ask Jesus that when he casts them out, they want him to send them to possess a herd of swine nearby. He tells them to go. With one word, it is done. They got out of the humans and used a herd of swine as a host of possession. The next thing you know, the entire herd is running violently and throwing themselves to the sea, essentially killing themselves. These pigs would rather kill themselves than be possessed by these parasitic freaks. That says a lot indeed. Some of you may think that what Jesus did with the swine was cruel, but you have to understand that God did it for a reason. He allowed it to happen because he knew that the swine keepers would witness what happened with these demons and unclean spirits. God knew that they would go and spread the news and the power and authority of Jesus Christ and who he is, and that he truly is the Son of God, come to save all of us by dying for our sins. God knows everything. He sees all, whether it is the past, the present, or the future. He knew exactly what he would tell to his chosen authors of the Bible to write, and this account of this timeline was one of them, because he knew that thousands of years 
from one his chosen authors were writing the Bible, millions would read it in the present right now, and we will be the ones to see or hear it. For example, right now, God foresaw this coming. The point is that this one possession was not an act of cruelty from Jesus. It was a necessary lesson, not just to the swine keepers and to the people who live there, but to us and millions of others right now. The worst part is that after all that Jesus did for them, the entire city came out to meet Jesus, but not to thank him, no, but rather to kick him out. Lastly, these are Messiah and Luke 10 necklaces. They are available in both the Gothic, Victorian, and Rectangle styles. 24-inch chain coated black metal. You can help spread the gospel by gifting this to a loved one or a friend who is a non-believer. Email us at rujam5 at gmail.com if you are interested in purchasing a necklace. Email is in the description box below. I have decided to wrap up today's episode, so see you next time, darlings. Do not forget to give glory and thanks to our God and Father in heaven above.